The first day of our field trip to Evans Welsh Ponies, each of the young pony pros picked out a colt to start. We caught our colts in the large pasture using gentle approach and retreat and began our interaction with some natural terrain. To access the area where we wanted to play, we had to lead the colts across water, walking on a narrow platform ourselves. The colts get turned out on this pasture a few weeks a year, so while they had experienced the water crossing before, it was a lot different with all the excitement of the day, being led by new handlers. To help the ponies be brave enough to cross the water, we gave them gentle encouragement and waited to see which pony volunteered to go. After watching the others, eventually all the ponies were confident enough to cross. Here you see Caitlin giving a very good example of letting her pony have lots of rope to check out the water before she walks across. Getting out on a longer rope was sort of the theme of the day. We wanted the ponies to be with us, but not right on top of us. We set up some of our toys in the pasture to do a short evaluation with the ponies to find out what they knew and what they were comfortable with. The ponies actually did a really great job and this five minute evaluation gave us a sense of what their temperaments were like. Before we walked off into the woods with them, we wanted to know a little bit about what was scary to them, what they were motivated by, where they fit in in the rest of the herd, and how we could expect them to react if they got a little bit scared. After each girl had a basic understanding of the cult that she was working with, we set out on our first migration. The goal of the migration was to help the ponies and the kids synchronize with one another without any real confrontation. At first, the kids had to flap their elbows or stomp their feet or swing their rope a little bit to keep the ponies away from them when we encountered something scary like a llama. But over the course of about 20 to 30 minutes, we were able to use the natural terrain to help the ponies learn how to position themselves in relation to the kids. When we came to one of the five or so water crossings available in this particular pasture, the kids would ask the ponies to stay, then hop across the water. They would then ask the ponies to come over to them, but the ponies wouldn't want to jump on top of the kids, which is, of course, a good thing. So the ponies would start to come across, and the kids would guide them out around them, so that when the pony came to the other side, he would be in a much better leading position. Here the kids and ponies are after about four water crossings, and you can see that already many of the ponies are doing a much nicer job leading. Maddie can even walk with her hand on Karen's neck. The next thing we do to help the ponies learn about keeping their space from us is to use the fence line, mini canyons, and water crossings to teach the ponies about driving and sending. Here the ponies are walking through the divots that we call mini canyons. The divot creates a path for the pony and he learns to walk through it and keep his space from you. Cues make a lot more sense to a pony when you can see the reason that you're giving them. Next, we have the ponies walk on one side of the water and we lead them from the other. At first, the ponies follow politely behind because they've learned not to rush in front. Now that they understand this, we can start doing a little bit of driving where we cue the pony to walk up in front like he would need to if we were lunging. By the end of the day, many of the kids can lead or send the ponies through the water, around the water, or even right into the water, like you see Dazzle doing here. Doesn't this seem like a super first interaction for the kids and the ponies? We hope that you'll try it too, using the terrain in your area. Migrating is a natural, low-stress way to establish communication and create a lasting bond.